Well, it's great to have Datin Paduka Marina Mate with us in the studio. Thanks for being here, Datin. You're very welcome. All right, getting right into it. You know, we're all really curious about your life. What was your childhood like? <laughs> My childhood was pretty normal and, and happy, you know. Um, I grew up in Alastar, which is a little town. Um, and uh, we lived, uh, for the first 10 years, we lived in the town itself. Um, in government quarters, uh, my my mom was a, uh, worked for the government. Uh, she a doctor in the uh, in the health uh, department, and um, and uh, my brothers and I we lived in a, a nice house uh, on Jalan Maxwell and um, big garden. Oh, so um, you met your husband? Um, I met my husband. My husband's a professional photographer, and um, I used to work on big book projects with a lot of photographers. I worked with a publisher, a um, French publisher called Edition de Demille, and we we would organize these big uh, projects where we brought photographers from around the world to photograph a country in a week. So like a week in the life of Malaysia, a week in the life of Vietnam, a week in the life of the Philippines, that sort of thing. So my hubby uh, had worked on the Indonesia book and then uh, a sensitive point to this day, he was not invited to the Malaysia book, of which I was project director. Um, but uh, he did. I had already met him, and then we worked on other other countries. And, um, and, and love blossomed from there. Something like that. <laughs> does he still hold uh, not being in the Malaysia book of records personally? Does he take it personally? Yeah, still. You know, if it ever comes out, it's like, oh yeah, that's the one I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> and you you have three lovely children. Tell us I about do. your children. Uh, my eldest is Ineza. She's twenty seven. Um, she is now a um, uh, film film person. I don't know how do you call it. Uh, she makes documentaries and um, short uh, films and public service announcements for various NGOs and things and. Um, and she's quite happy doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and then my second one is a boy called Haga, and he's a guess what photographer. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> following the steps of the dad. The following the steps of my of, of my husband, who didn't know whether to be appalled or proud when he decided that uh, he, that's what he wanted mm -hmm. to do. And then the little one, Shasha, is 15. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's still in school. She, she's she's oh, still sorry. in school. Um, she is uh, about to take her IGCSEs next year, you know, all levels. And um, very focused little kid, you know, wants to, knows what she wants and that sort of thing. Does she have an ambition already? Um, exactly what she wants to do, I'm not sure. But at the moment, her main thing is that she wants to be a polyglot. She wants to learn as many languages as possible because she saw some YouTube thing or some young guy in New York who spoke dozens of languages. Mm -hmm. she's very Maybe impressed. she'll go into politics. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> and I think she hopes not too. But, uh, well, I think, you know, it's nice to speak a lot of languages. Right. So we're interested to know what kind of mother would you say you are? Oh, gosh. I have no idea. Very lax one. <laughs> very lax one. Um, my husband likes to say, you know, that democracy is overrated in the family. You know, we try to be sort of nice and democratic and let everyone have a say, and then it kind of bites back mm -hmm. because then you have to deal with this talk back, you know, um, which is not um, easy. But I, you know, kids are like that today. They're really smart. They're aware of all sorts of things, and you just have to roll with it in many ways. Okay. Yeah. Did your parents influence or inspire your parenting style? Oh, uh, a little, a little bit in that they, um, in terms of uh, values, uh, that sort of thing. Um, you know, telling the truth and you know, working mm -hmm. hard. I'd like to know um, what actually first inspired the activist in you. I'm not sure actually, um, because. Um, I never woke up one day and decided I was going to be an activist. So I was always interested in uh, various social issues, but didn't do um, much actively. Like, I've been a member of Women's Aid organization since I don't know when, but didn't really do anything, you know, in the beginning, such as lend support, pay members' fees, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, I think um, 
later on, you know, I decided that the skills that I've learned in my work, organizing things, fundraising and all that, could be put to good use. Um, so. Is this something that you can actually, you know, live on? Meaning, no. <laughs> you need a proper job, don't you? Yeah, most, most of us working in this, you know, um, have a day job. Um, there are some people who work full time, um, like my friend Ivy Joe's here, she's ED of WAO, okay, that's a full time job. Uh, and the challenge for a lot of these NGOs is really to get good people and pay them a decent living wage, you know, because otherwise you're competing with, with other things and, and you can't, you just can't rely on volunteers. So, so yeah, I know you can't live off it. There, there are people who, you know, earn a living writing or making documentaries or mm -hmm. films or whatever and and then in their spare time doing you know activist work. Right. And, and uh, we want to thank you once again for taking time out of your very, very, very busy, busy schedule. schedule to be with us today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.